Hello, hello. Welcome back, friends, to Alpha Beta Soup. I'm TXMC. Well, today we've got a few things to discuss. It's been a tumultuous few days. We'll look at the Bitcoin price chart. We'll look at some of the equity market indexes. We'll also take a peek at the futures market and sprinkle in some on-chain. I don't know how long this video will go today, but I decided to punt on doing a live stream because I wanted to get some of my thoughts out there about what's been happening. So we'll push the live stream back a couple of days. If you enjoy my content, make sure to give my video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all of your support, but I won't keep you waiting any longer. Let's talk Bitcoin. Well, there's a lot of buzz in the market after what we experienced yesterday. Coming into the morning, all of the major indexes had gapped down heavily, and there was a lot of fear that we were going to see further downside. But after a choppy first hour, most of the indices managed to rally by lunchtime, and by the end of the day, all of them had closed green, which is really remarkable. The last time we had spoken, I had expressed concern that we would see closes below these recent lower lows, which would then mean a lower low after a lower high on the major indexes. Now that typically in traditional finance is a trigger. It's a time where algo bots start de-risking. It's a place where bull theses get invalidated. And I expected a domino effect of negative actions. But I was wrong about that assessment, at least in the short term, and we saw strength and a reversal with all of the indexes now closing back above their wicks, including the Dow, which had been the most stubborn of the three indexes. So we had equities bouncing back from a scary gap down to close above a key level at the same time that Bitcoin managed to see strong buying volume come in and set a higher low. Now it's a higher low so far. We are still structurally in a bearish downtrend and still well below the 200 day as well as some other bearish factors. But in the short term, seeing this kind of wick come at a key moment is a bit encouraging. If I flip over here and look at a volume chart, the amount of buying volume that came in yesterday was pretty impressive, and it's one of the highest volume candles that we've had in the past half a year. If you look at buy volume candles, it's the highest value we've had since late July. And now that's encouraging because some of the other rallies we've had during this structural downtrend have not seen that same kind of volume. So it's nice to see that we're getting it on this move here. Additionally, this move yesterday managed to avoid a key level for the monthly chart. So let me flip over here to my monthly Bitcoin chart, bring up my drawing tools. Yesterday's wick got down here below what has been so far the lowest monthly close of this entire price range, right here at 35,060. And yesterday actually wicked below it and then managed to get back above it. Now, February still has three days left. You can see on my little timer over here on the corner, three days and 10 hours as of right this moment. And if this structural reversal is to play out for Bitcoin, what it ideally needs to do is avoid closing below 35,060 three days from now. Now, some of you may be saying, TXMC, what are you talking about? We're all the way up here at 39,000. 35 is done with. It's out of the question. Well, we were just there yesterday. So I think it's a bit premature to be dismissive of any bearish hesitation I may be expressing. There's little to be gained from catching a falling knife. And after four months of steady downward price action, it's worth pausing, being patient, and waiting for more confirmation of the reversal. There's still time for this monthly chart to unwind. We need to get three more days ahead and see that this value is not closed below. Because if it does, that's very high time frame structural invalidation. And that's not what Bitcoin wants to see. Now, one other thing price has managed to do is carve out for itself a nice parallel channel here. And you can see it's actually been kissed precisely five times already. And we managed to avoid it yesterday. Now, maybe we actually come down and kiss this level at some point. But as we just described on the monthly chart, I would hope that it didn't lead to a monthly close down at this level or else that would be structural invalidation on a high time frame. But just in terms of market structure, 
generally. I still believe that this level right here around 40,000, 40,700 is an important place for price to determine whether it can hold support or not. I mean, if you just look back to the last year, there's been a lot of times where this price level has been an important place. So I think it's totally valid that we wait to see price get back over this before we start to warm to the idea of a reversal. So 40K definitely needs to be surmounted next. If we pop over here to look at the coinalized chart, this is one of the ways that we track the futures market. And there's something here I'd like to discuss that it played out yesterday. So what we're looking at at the top here is a four hour chart of the Binance perpetual future with tether backing BTC USDT. Now, what we've got down below the price chart are the two different types of margin available in futures. Now, we've talked about this on the channel quite a bit, though it's been a few weeks, so I'll give you a refresher. In futures, open interest represents the sum total of open contracts. And across all of the exchanges, there are two popular ways to margin your contract. You can margin it with Bitcoin, with the actual asset you're trading, that is coin margined contracts, or you can collateralize your contract with stable coins, with a cash equivalent. Now, for short traders, historically, stablecoin margin has been their collateral of choice because it provides more stability when price goes against you. And shorts, already taking the more risky side of the trade, tend to rely on the stability of that stablecoin margin. Now, coin margin tends to be more popular with long traders, historically. And part of that has to do with its convexity. So when you are a long trader, if you take Bitcoin as your collateral, when your trade goes against you, not only is your trade losing, but your margin that helps you keep your position open is losing value also because it's backed with Bitcoin and Bitcoin is losing value. So as a long trader, using coin margin provides a lot of risk to the downside, but that risk becomes outsized reward when the price goes in your favor. Favor. So if you're a long trader with coin margin, your trade starts going in your favor, your trade is worth more money, and your collateral is growing in value. So long traders, especially who use leverage, they often like to use coin margin as their collateral. Not always, but that has been the case through much of Bitcoin's derivative history. So now that we've explained all those dynamics, let's look at what happened just yesterday. So coming into the morning yesterday, the market was selling off as everyone was waking up to the realization that Russia was in fact invading Ukraine. Now, as price was declining here, we saw a rise in coin margined open interest. These are long traders opening positions as price is dipping. They're buying the dip and stepping in. And then as price rises yesterday and we see a recovery of the loss, their positions closed out. And they closed out back down to basically the level they were at before. This is positions opening into price weakness, closing into price strength. Long traders. Now here in the middle, stablecoin contract. These represent majority hedging traders and shorts. As price was declining in the days leading up to yesterday, stablecoin margin open interest was relatively mild. Small openings and closures throughout here, but nothing really to write home about. But then when price dipped and immediately started to reverse, many of those shorts got closed. Now when you see a big candle like this, that is typically indicative of a squeeze when it accompanies price movement. This is the exchange forcefully closing a bunch of positions as price was rising. These positions were backed with stablecoin margin, which we've explained is the margin of choice for short traders. So you're looking at a short squeeze here, albeit not one of the largest ones we've ever had. If I zoom out on my chart a little bit, one positive development is that the open interest level that got wiped out to yesterday takes open interest back to where it was in late December. This is December 19th and 20th right here. So we took out months worth of open interest in a single day yesterday. That's a positive development in my opinion. And we'll now have to observe and see if this kind of a shakeout changes the paradigm of the traders in derivatives, because all we've seen for the last few months is steady hedging and low leveraged shorting. It's part of the reason why the aggregate funding rate has lost a bit of its signal. There isn't an aggressive bias being pushed by one side or the other in the futures market. There's been a lot of conservative hedging and small leveraged shorting going on. And we saw yesterday 
a fair amount of those positions were closed out. But much OI still remains. There's still 140,000 Bitcoin in open interest stablecoin margin. And there's still another 100,000 Bitcoin in the other side of the futures. And if I pop over here to coinglass.com, this is a website that tracks liquidations. And right here, we're looking at Bitcoin liquidations by day going back to December 3rd, December 4th. Now, this event back here was that huge liquidation on December 4th that we talked about on this channel. I'll leave a link in the description below to the video Blood in the Water, where we reviewed this event in detail. Highly recommend you check that out. But what interests me right now is what happened yesterday, and we can see that both some longs and some shorts got liquidated. Now, in terms of severity, long liquidations were about on par with what they experienced in late January when we got the last move down. However, However, short liquidations, they experienced their most severe day of pain since this December 3rd, December 4th event. So bears bore the brunt of the damage yesterday, and we can see that here on this chart. But there's still a fair amount of open interest in the system. So this event yesterday didn't exactly reset the market. But as a long-term Bitcoin bull, it's great to see some bears getting squeezed. And as we've touched on throughout numerous videos on this channel leading up to the highs in November and in the drawbacks since, the supply dynamics for Bitcoin are very healthy and positive. Hodling is going on across the spectrum. Long-term holders have about the same amount of supply that they've always acquired in bear markets. So in a sense, the hodler class is at peak hodl. What we're looking at here is the realized cap hodl wave distribution of supply showing only that supply that is two years and older. And we're looking at a chart of the last two years of price action. Now, the reason I want to show you this was just to emphasize the point I was making about the tightness of supply dynamics. During the rally in 2020 and 2021, a bunch of older coins were being spent and distributed into the bull run. That's the typical distribution behavior that occurs in a bull run. But if you'll notice, since the distribution ended, this category of supply has essentially gone horizontal. There's been a little bit of oscillation, but essentially horizontal. And what that's showing is that since this moment back here, when distribution started to smooth out, most of the coin spending, basically since May of last year to now, has been contained within the same portion of supply. It's not coming from older coins being spent out of these older groups and back into new circulation. Let me flip these filters. So what we're looking at here, this is all of the supply less than two years old. And what you can see coming into the bull run is that it had a lower market share. It had about 75% of market share. And then as, as coins were distributed from older hands to newer hands, it crept up to over 90% of supply weighted by the realized cap, weighted by its dollar realized value. And since that moment, this has gone sideways. And all of the coin spending that we've experienced basically since April has been contained within coins that have moved in the last two years. So all of the hodlers that existed before this bull run have experienced their spending, they have realized their profit, and they are patiently sitting and waiting for the next cycle to begin. So what we can say about Bitcoin is that it is uniquely positioned so that once this bearishness starts to clear up, when the macro headwinds begin to ease, Bitcoin will be uniquely positioned to help lead the recovery. Now, I don't know when that's going to to be. I'm not in a position where I would make a bold call right now that I think at a certain month or time of the year, Bitcoin's going to have a bull run. I think there's too many factors weighing against the market right now. However, if we get through March, we get past the Federal Reserve meeting in the middle of the month and the market, if it finds out the Fed is going to stay true to its plan and that everything expected is playing out, well, that reinforces certainty and that may help to drive a bit of appreciation afterwards. So I'm waiting for the next month to go by. I'm waiting to see what the Fed does in, in March. And it's possible that we may get a rally afterward. The market moves with certainty. And right now it is uncertain about exactly what's going to happen over the next two to three weeks. And that is giving me pause. So to kind of bring all of this together, we know we've got tight supply dynamics. All the hodlers are done spending. We've got coin maturation happening. You can see the decline in these younger waves, which is showing the maturation of coins across the cohorts, minimal spending on chain. 
We also saw yesterday a short squeeze, which wiped out a fair amount of open interest and took OI back to a level that it hadn't seen since late December. So that's a positive development for bulls. But we do know there's still a considerable amount of open interest in the system, and there's not a clear signal coming out about the agenda of these traders, of their bias. And I think that there may be some more boring times ahead for the futures market. And as we explored on the price chart, we saw some positive bullish developments yesterday, strong buying volume coming in, setting in a higher local low, and retaining structural integrity above the monthly close low. However, we are still in a macro structural downtrend that's been going on for several months and there's more work yet to be done before we can confidently confirm a reversal. So right now I am cautiously optimistic. I still have a macro bearish outlook over the next couple of months, but I'm open to being wrong and will continue to monitor the market. And if it starts to show more strength, then I will be willing to adjust my thesis. But right now, this is still within my parameters for general bearishness. And I think with what's going on in Russia and Ukraine, with what's been playing out in Canada the last couple of weeks, with concerns about an executive order coming out of the Biden administration that may crack down on stable Coins, and with the Federal Reserve itself about to begin a new monetary regime in a couple of weeks, there's still so much going on. There are so many plates spinning at once that I don't feel comfortable making a bold directional call. Okay, that's it. I'll wrap up my video here. I don't want this to go too long. I'd like you to be able to enjoy your weekend as much as you can. My thoughts are with everyone in Ukraine and those who are affected by the conflict going on over there. I hope you're staying safe. If you have any feedback or questions for me, please leave them in the comments and I will read through them. I was thinking about doing a live stream today, but I just wanted to get this video out and share some of my thoughts. So we'll postpone the live stream till maybe early next week. Let me know if you have any thoughts about that. But in the meantime, I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you're able to spend time with your families. Take care of yourselves. I will speak with all of you again very soon. Cheers.